played Star Citizen before, you're aware of the fact that you're going to encounter bugs and things that don't work right. But one thing has been so consistently buggy that it's now more than anything considered to be more of a rite of passage than a bug that's to be patched. I'm of course talking about elevators. Other than being forms of travel, are known to be instant death machines, break down entirely, even more than real elevators, can lock you inside of them and eventually starve you to death, can open mid-transport, leading you to, well, death once again, can lack all solid matter, ejecting you through the floor, or sometimes even be portals to pocket dimensions where you can spend your entire life in an existential limbo. They are without a doubt the most persistently buggy things in Star Citizen, responsible for ruining countless gameplay sessions and causing immeasurable rage quits. But how would you feel if I told you that they could have been fixed long ago? Heck, they could probably be fixed today if CIG were so inclined to do so. But the reason why they haven't was purely because of ego. I'm Dead Leader, and I hate to have to do this, but today we're talking about elevators. Now, to fully explain why things are the way they are with elevators at the moment, I have to first explain the biggest difference between Star Citizen and many other space sim games. And one of its largest selling points is that it's a fully physicalized game that you can travel throughout without any loading screens, breaking up the flow of gameplay. For example, you see a store, you walk up to it, the door opens, and the store is already loaded and ready to interact with. Or you walk up to your ship, open the door, enter your ship. These are examples of small interactions that have been made seamless by having all the assets loaded persistently even before you've entered the space since it was preloaded. A quick example of what this would be like in a lot of other games previously, like for instance Fallout or Oblivion, in those games we'd walk up to a door, select enter, then you would have a black loading screen where that instance of the store would load and the outside world that you just came from would be unloaded to save memory. But Star Citizen is an accomplishment where it takes a step further, where it's not just these small instances that are seamless. It extends to the degree that if you're out in space and you spot some mountain on a planet from orbit you've never seen before, you can go directly to that mountain, get out of your ship and do space stuff on it, all without ever stopping the gameplay experience. And it's this game design philosophy that CIG brings to every game mechanic, both small and large, that sets them apart from other developers who would otherwise opt for a less complicated solution to this type of gameplay issue. This is CIG's sacred cow. A sacred cow, meaning something considered immune from question or criticism, especially unreasonably so. And this is where we come to the problem with elevators. In most games, elevators are a way for them to hide a loading screen. You enter a box, the door closes. While the player is unable to see anything, the world where they were just in is unloaded and it loads the new location around them. And only when the load is fully complete, do the doors of the elevator open to complete the illusion that they've just seamlessly moved from one location to the other. A perfect magic trick. Or an even simpler version of this illusion, if the game doesn't have the need to load anything new, once you enter an elevator, you select the floor and you're simply teleported to an identical elevator. And once the game has checked that everything is ready and the elevator music has played enough to complete the illusion, then the doors will open and you're free to leave safely. However, this solution is not acceptable for Star Citizen with their game design philosophy. Because if the player is supposed to be physically moving towards that location, even if any loading trickery is entirely undetectable by the player within their shielded elevator, then it's not truly physically loading players seamlessly without a loading screen. Instead, what's actually happening in Star Citizen is elevators are physical set pieces that are in real time bussing players back and forth from pickup to destination. This means even though you can't see any of the scenery you're passing or what any players you may be passing are doing, they will still be loading that data to you. And your location and what you're doing will also be transmitted live to those players also, despite them never seeing you as well. This makes elevators extremely difficult to both 
code for and run consistently in the game, since the server is dealing with so many variables just to keep the players safe and unaware that they're being needlessly hurtled through a location, which is what results in all the game breaking bugs we experience with them. A lot of the time an elevator can kill you or push you through the game world because it actually physically hit you after you called it because a giant invisible box was ramming you through the wall mesh, which has been the frustrating norm in the new Babbage hospital and vehicle garage for a long while. But because of this sacred cow of game design philosophy, despite it having no visible way of being detected by a player's experience other than elevators working correctly, CIGs still do not make the change. And it's not just elevators that are negatively affected by this rigid design philosophy and inability to kill that sacred cow, so to speak. There's more gameplay in Star Citizen than is also hindered. For instance, bunkers for a very long time have been a bit of a joke, a reflection of what first-person shooter gameplay is supposed to be like without ever really being good enough to be considered fun gameplay. NPCs teleport around the map, bullets misfire and commands get jumbled as a server tries to keep up. This is because even when no player is inside the bunker and nobody can see it, nor can anything be affected by it, if you're above one of the planet's surfaces, it will still be loaded into the game. And so all the AI and physics will be actively controlled by the server's CPU and memory. And what's particularly egregious about this is all bunkers require you to take a long elevator to get inside of. They could easily have made it so once you get into the elevator, the planet loads out and you're put into a client-side hosted bunker map where the NPC AI is powered by your own PC, reducing the load on the server for you and everyone else that's no longer having to communicate all those calculations live back and forth. Not only would it help fix the experience inside of the bunkers, but all that CPU that's been freed up by having control of the NPC AI inside the bunker could then be applied to other NPCs throughout the verse that do require to be loaded in. No more moonwalking NPCs creeping you out and more stability throughout the game in general. And at this point, you might be wondering, they must know about this, why? Wouldn't they do something about it? Maybe this guy's missing something. Well, I can tell you why they have made it such a taboo to change. One of Star Citizen's major sale points is that they're doing the impossible. It's never been achieved before. And for the players in media, in the ways the game has already achieved that, with the ability to land on plants, enter buildings and ships without load, that's the reality for them now. But for a game developer, when you explain the technical scope of what you're attempting to do over a water cooler, the extremely impressive stuff to another developer is all those technical limitations that the player never sees. Because they spend countless hours of development time trying to come up with workarounds to get past technical or performance limitations that their games may have. And forever, elevators have been the simplest and mo most natural way to hide such limitations. So when you tell another dev, we're having physicalized elevators that actually move throughout the game world in real time with the players inside them. It's an incredible flex. That easily conveys the scope of your project's technological goals. It's a ballsy move to do something so much more complex than is needed to be. Just to be able to continue to say you don't have loading screens. It's purely ego. Now, I understand that technically in the future, dynamic server meshing will allow for more computer power to hopefully be allocated to these systems to allow them to run much smoother than they do now. And so there's an argument to be made that if they made these changes now to make it run better, then it could be considered redundant since they will be required to make these changes once again, once server meshing is integrated. But this isn't just a matter of making the game more playable in the short term for the backers at all. If you're including overly and needlessly complex systems into the game in this alpha stage, which both hinder the ability to accurately test the game mechanics that you do need help with, since you need to use multiple elevators just to get inside of a ship before you can do anything in the game, you're also wasting dev time trying to constantly put updates out addressing the bugs caused by this. 
If you really don't want to have to kill the sacred cow, then sure, fine. Include physicalized elevators and bunkers after you have introduced dynamic server meshing. It would still be overkill and a waste of resources to work in my opinion, but at least theoretically you should have the excess computer power to run it at that point. Being able to drastically improve the gameplay, testing process and development now in the meantime is what's going to get the game along the finish line. It's what's going to get less people complaining. It's going to be better for marketing to get new players in the game. And look, I don't blame any particular developer or anyone that's worked on the game for this reason. With the company growing the way it has from just a, a concept and a, a dream to kind of pull the impossible off, things like this could just become set in concrete early on and just the rules by which you are set to develop things. And it's not really possible for any one person to change this without an entire company-wide decision to make changes to the way the game is developed. I just think ultimately they should really look at what things are done because of this sacred cow and in which instances realistically would it benefit them and us to kill it. My name's Dead Leader and I'll see you in the verse. space. It's cold and it's lonely. But you don't need to be with Dead Leader Merchandise. Merchandising. With Dead Leader Merch, you can represent Star Citizen without looking like a dog. Merchandising. Everyone will think it's for some sick band and if they ask what Dead Leader is, you can just say, you probably wouldn't know them and they'll think you're sick. Merchandising. So grab your Dead Leader merch today and support your favorite content creator. Me, Dead Leader. Merchandising.